Every single thing is a portal to universal being. Every breath, every moment. I do believe that when we have an awe, awe-filled experience, it's because we've touched a doorway into heaven. Something happens in our heart that just lets us know something amazing is present on this planet. Sometimes it's a human being, sometimes it's nature, but we've gotten addicted to things that keep us out of those circumstances. The tricky thing in being an adult human being, it's not so true as a child because you're still learning, but we've learned to quickly judge the way we feel about things. Is that a good feeling? Is that a bad feeling? You find yourself in a tree, you find yourself at the river, you find yourself at the ocean, and you feel amazing. And then you try to put words to that feeling, and someone isn't having that experience, and then it becomes a discussion about whether or not your feeling about it is real. Or whether or not you should be challenged by the way in which you're describing what you feel. I don't know how it happens that the awe and the love and the wonder gets drilled, drummed, beaten out of the consciousness of a child. But it has been dismissed for other things in most people. It certainly has in me. But I want to, I'm, I'm trying to find the most universal way to be back in that awe awesome place of knowing life is great and then wondering what it is that takes you out of that place so that you have the power to go back to that awesome wonderful place to find those things that when you're in the midst of them connections that are to heaven and to holiness that no one can take away from you one of the ones that's my favorite is to listening to bird song. It's like, where does that come from? Who made that? Smelling flowers? That is like, like that is just, um, who made a rose smell like a rose? Who said hyacinths were gonna be so sweet? Who put lilacs on the, the planet. I sometimes think if there's that much magic in that bush, what kind of magic is in you? What kind of doorway to heaven are you for me? Oftentimes we just get distracted by the things that are annoying and we forget about the things that are wonderful. I watch people do things with expertise and care, and I'm just taken to a place of, I don't do it that way, and I don't know how to do it that way. How did I get so lucky to have you in my life? But there are ways in which, because we want to fit in, because we think other people's thoughts are more important than our own, we actually dumb down our own heart, our own experience of connection and thrill and passion and lust and, and wonder. I have the experience every spring when things start popping out of the ground that I go around and I touch the, the tulips and the daffodils when they're coming up saying, I see you, well, welcome, come on out. It's a little insane, but you know what? I don't really care because the like, communion I have with them is like so intimate. And yet I've seen people um, not even appreciate the first stage and they only appreciate when the flower, flower's in full bloom. And I think I get to enjoy it when it's this big, this big, this big, oh, you're almost ready, here you come, and then there you are. Now what, Won't, don't you want more of that crazy in your life? Don't you want more of the every step of it is wonderful? 
But until we are willing to allow ourselves to touch that sense of never questioning again, we will always believe there's a condition, a rule, a protocol for being a whole, holy human being. Because we have forgotten we were designed to be that and we already are that. <laughs>